Hello, I'm Keone. It, like, you guys have had some wonderful talks today. Um, so hopefully I'll give something nice and short and sweet to to end this great conference conference day. So a little bit about me. I previously worked um, in Durendi's lab on the Free Genes project, um, building free and open source genes for the world. Um, I've written a lot of software for doing bioinformatics with the project Poly, which now is called DNA Design. Um, previously co-founded a startup called Trilo Bio, doing end-to-end -end automation for synthetic biology. And currently I'm building a company called Inala doing uh, high throughput gene assembly. Um, so that's background, but what am I doing? Practically speaking, I'm attempting to build a 60 codon JCVI Syn3 um, through recoding both the tryptophan or both the serine codons, um, AGT, similar to the 61 codon E. coli, the tryptophan codon, um, and of course the TAG stop codon. Um, why? Well, I think really that genome synthesis and construction should be routine and not really a, a special thing, but something that you can just do for a project. Um, the hope is for me in the long term that we can have fully synthetic genomes commercially available for, you know, perhaps less than $25,000 um, that you can just buy right away um, instead of having to go through a lot of work to figure out the ways to construct that. Um, for specifically 60 codon uh, JCVI Syn3, I think that unnatural amino acid incorporation is a super interesting field of research. To be able to incorporate multiple unnaturals um, is difficult right now, but if we had open codons in something like JCVI Syn3, perhaps we can explore new protein functions that weren't uh, previously available to us. So the core problem that I'm looking at solving is that plasmid synthesis costs have gone up over time, not down. If you look at it, in 2018, it cost $90 per kilobase pair. Now it costs 125 And so purely if you look at um, the, if you think about our ability to manipulate the biological world as um, the price of getting synthetic DNA, well, we've regressed, not progressed in our ability to, to modify things. Uh, and that's a bad thing. So how do we get around this? Well, one way is oligo pool technology. Oligo pools are much cheaper than clonal genes. Um, even from the same supplier like Twist Bioscience, you can get an oligo pool for $4 per kilobase pair, whereas it would cost $125 for a, um, a clonal gene. And there are several DNA synthesis uh, or oligo pool synthesis providers that I have on my little graph, such as IDT, Genscript, Agilent, Twist, and Dynagene, all generally showing as you get more and more um, larger and larger oligo pools, you can get cheaper and cheaper per kilobase pair price. Um, and so that's pretty exciting on, you know, synthesizing lots of DNA. You can do it for fairly cheap. So what do I do? I clone oligo pools. So here's just some pictures I have of my, uh, of my setup. I have three opentrons, or previously I had three opentrons, now I have six opentrons that can run um, and clone lots of genes. And we'll get to those numbers in a second. Um, learn more. I'm not really doing anything conceptually very special. Um, here's a paper in ACS Synthetic Biology from New England Biolabs called Highly Paralyzed Construction of DNA from Low-Cost Oligonucleotide Mixtures Using Data Optimized Assembly Design and Golden Gate. Um, this paper generally has everything that I've been doing for the last year, um, published by a third party. Um, but if you'd like to investigate it for yourself, you can. So an update from last year. So last year I gave a talk on, on this project. Um, and so my update for this year is that I haven't been able to construct the um, DNA that I wanted, and I'll get into that in a little, but I do have now a system for cloning that works. And so here are some numbers. One, internally, I am able to get about an $8 to $12 per kilobase pair price with clone sequence verified glycerol stocks. Um, the throughput's less than I would have liked, but still pretty good. Um, 600 plasmids per week uh, with about three hours of labor per day, and I can increase that if I really want to. Um, with the current robot setup. I've screened about 3,068 plasmids. 
1,532 have been successful, um, with most of the failures actually just being attributable to the random mutation rate, which is really good. Uh, and about 20% are failing for unknown reasons, around mixed colonies, it seems. Um, and then I have another 3,000 outside of my official database that I've been, uh, that I just kind of did one off sequencing for. Um, I've been able to discover the actual mutation rates for all of these uh, oligo pools from different providers. So one in 465 for Dynagene and one in 1940 from Twist. That really impacts the size of DNA that, um, that I can synthesize. We'll have some more numbers um, for the scientists out there. Uh, these are the mutations that I've observed in in an example pool of about 900 clones. Um, for oligosynthesis, you see that it's mainly with it's mainly indels that you're observing. Um, a few point mutations, and interestingly enough, the point mutations, uh, like the 40% of them, are G to T mutations. I don't have a biological reason for this. Um, I am only synthesizing the top strand because I'm doing an amplification reaction before assembly, um, but we simply observe lots of G to T mutations, and I don't know why. Um, how, one of the reasons I can get the costs of building these genes down so much is that I use a flongal for sequencing, and so from about 1,500 colonies, I can get 900 with 5x coverage plasmids out. Um, so for $200, I'm sequencing 900 plasmids, which I think is a pretty good price. Um, systematic nanopore errors are not uncommon. I do all my validation with nanopore, not with NGS or PacBio or Sanger. Um, they do occur um, at a non-zero rate, but are usually solvable by some basic strand analysis. And so I have a kind of pile-up file string on the bottom showing one sequencing run, where a lowercase g would be on the reverse strand, it, observing a g. Since there, we only see g's on the uh, on one of the strands and not the other, we can say that this is probably a nanopore error. Um, from the last meet, I've used 48 flongal flow cells, about one per week, so I've been really pumping to get the system overall working. Um, and finally, another interesting tidbit is that the competent cells cost more than all the enzymes combined. So if you're thinking about doing high throughput gene assembly, well, turns out, don't express your own enzymes, make your own comp cells. So what's the plan? When I came here last, I had planned on synthesizing um, 55 kilobase pair plasmids with GenScript oligopools. As it turns out, uh, the mutation rate for those was too high. Um, in order to get a good amount of DNA out. So I've been switching to Agilent oligopools. Um, we'll be cloning 720 uh, 800 base pair plasmids and then doing a sequential assembly up to 55 kilobase pairs. Um, unlike last time I presented, now the system actually works robustly enough that I can kind of be hands off and just have machines uh, construct these plasmids. I plan on doing it within um, a one week time span optimally. Um, so we'll see if I can create, you know, 550 kilobase pairs of cloned DNA uh, in that time, not including the higher level construction steps, but hopefully within a month or within a short time of starting, I'll be able to do that. And for the initial construction of the 720, 800 or 800 base pair plasmids, um, I plan on doing a live stream of it. So we'll be doing it. This is my lab out of my room um, where I clone thousands of plasmids. Um, and so the hope is that I can clone 720 plasmids within a couple days, live stream it, um, and then go through the higher level assembly to construct the JCVI Sin 3 with 60 codons. Um, thanks, and I can take any questions now. Keone, it, it, I, I have a much clearer sense of how you're doing all of this. Uh, which is fabulous. It still seems like I, I I don't understand how you can get from your current error rate to producing the the needed you know, highly accurate molecules that we're going to have to have. Yeah, 
good question. So um, it's a one in about 2000 mutation rate for twist oligo pools. So the mm -hmm. idea is that I will construct one kilobase pair fragments and then clonally sequence verify them. Mm -hmm. um, and then simply do another assembly reaction on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, then sequence verify that and do another reaction on top of that. Mm -hmm. Sequence verify that. Mm -hmm. um, all the way up to the 55 kilobase pair chunks. Um, does that make does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, and so similarly for your technique, so as as I've discussed with you, I had this idea of of making um, you know plasmids for three thousand three thousand mycobacterium leprae genes. It would yep. be the the same process to um, again screen and get all of these perfect, I guess. Yep. So that's why uh, kind of the nanopore. Um, stuff is so important and getting that price down mm -hmm. so that you can just sequence verify a lot of plasmids and then mm -hmm. you know assemble on top of those